PCB Foundations, by Paul Taubman, and Sean Kelly. Presented by 9.connects. Chapter 7. Component Libraries. 7.1. Introduction. Component libraries are the backbone of PCB design and without them, one cannot design in most modern PCB EDA tools. Each component must have a symbolic representation for use in the schematic diagram, and a physical implementation in the form of a footprint for the PCB layout. These are commonly referred to as models. In addition, a component should have sufficient parametric data to fully describe the part. Libraries can be thought of as a container of components. 7.1.1. Linking the models. In addition to storing components, the library maintains the links between the component and the models that are associated to it. Models are a representation of the component to accommodate different aspects of the design. Typically, a component must have a symbol and footprint model. However, there are other models that can be employed, depending on the capability of the EDA tool being used. For example, one may have a 3D model to represent the physical aspects of the component. There could be a circuit simulation SPICE model for a component. 7.1.2 Library Structures There are two common types of library structures, the symbol-centric library, file-based, and the component-centric library, which includes both file and database types. In this figure, the dotted lines indicate optional models. 7.2 Symbol-Centric Libraries In a symbol-centric library, each component in the library is defined by the symbol. The graphic of the symbol is embedded, not linked. Thus, each component has its own symbol graphic. There is no linking to an existing symbol model. Each component in a symbol-centric library consists of a symbol graphic for use in the schematic, a link to one or more footprint models for use in the PCB layout, parametric information that describes the component, such as the manufacturer's part number, internal company part number, temperature range, tolerance, etc. These parameters will be referred to as intelligent data, and discussed in further detail in a later chapter of this book. It may also contain SPICE and signal integrity simulation models, or other models that the PCB tool may be able to simulate or render. 7.3. Component-Centric Library a component-centric library relies on a file or database to define the component, but does not embed the symbol graphic like the symbol-centric library. Instead, the component contains the parametric information, and links to the symbol and footprint models. It is common for those who are new to an EDA tool to start with a symbol-centric library. It is the easiest to use and learn. However, Symbol-centric libraries are not the best solution for a team of designers. A symbol-centric library requires a symbol graphic for each component. As a result, a common symbol like a resistor can be represented in the libraries with various orientations and styles. Thus, the library will lack consistency. Those who have used the symbol-centric approach initially struggle with the component-centric library configuration, because the symbol no longer defines the component. It is demoted to nothing more than a graphic, and is handled in a similar fashion to that of a footprint model. The component definition in a component-centric library is either its own separate file, or a record in a database. 7.3.1. Database Library. Database libraries are a type of component-centric library. It will utilize the rows and columns of a database or spreadsheet, to fully describe a part in tabular form. The EDA tool reads these parameters to retrieve the proper model, and to insert the parametric data into the component when placed into the design. This image is an example of a small portion of an MS Access database library. Each row represents a different component in the library, and each column represents a specific parameter of the component. Some of the columns are directly filled in with alphanumeric data, while some contain links to symbols, footprints, and other models. As shown, 
Many of the parameters of a given capacitor are common across multiple capacitors in the library. For example, the same symbol in the library ref column is reused for each non-polarized ceramic capacitor. Adding a new capacitor to the database library is as simple as copying the data from one row and pasting it into a new row, and this will result in a new component in the library. With this type of library, there is no need to create or copy a new symbol or footprint model if one already exists. This is a way to create consistency and order in a library, since many components can be built from previously defined components, symbols, and footprints. 7.4. Library Management It cannot be stressed enough that the most critical aspect of building and maintaining a good library is consistency. All components and libraries should be created with a well-defined set of symbols and footprints. All components should provide the same intelligent information in a standard format for both the name of the parameter and its value. Ideally, a library should be maintained by a single responsible person that controls the content, often referred to as a librarian. All too often, libraries are not controlled and maintained by a single entity, which opens the door to differing sets of parameters and graphics. For example, two individuals might create a simple resistor in these differing ways. There are several notable differences in the two parts that were created, as you can see in this corresponding table. This example shows that a great deal of variation can be realized, even with a very simple part like a resistor. More complicated parts being created by more individuals, will lead to even more variation. Variation causes libraries to become very disorganized and difficult to navigate in. It can also be detrimental, and time-consuming, when trying to assemble an accurate bomb, bill of materials, or when trying to update parts from different libraries in a design. This type of variation can lead to important parameters being left out, and a lot of time spent cleaning things up at the end of a design when there is little time to do so. Good library management begins with having a uniform, company-wide, and well-defined way of giving each part a unique part number that is searchable, and does not conflict with any other parameter or supplier part number. For example, using a part number like 500, would conflict with a 3M masking tape product that a procurement department might order as an office supply. Confusion like this can take time and effort to work out, and is unnecessary if a unique part numbering scheme is robust and used with discipline. Good library management also includes all the necessary parameters needed to fully describe a part, without overburdening the library with information that is not necessary. And, as mentioned previously, all parameter names and common values should have the same exact spelling and format, to avoid a bill of materials that might look like the following. Note all the different ways that the manufacturer's name was defined, and how some manufacturers can be listed differently, like Texas Instruments or TI. Another important aspect of a good library will include a human-readable description field that allows users to easily search parts by their description. An example might look like the following. A good library will also include well-maintained links to all the necessary models, such as the symbol, footprint, 3D step model, simulation models, signal integrity models, etc. 7.5. Procurement. The intelligent data of a component serves two purposes. It is to provide characteristic information about a component so that the designer can make an intelligent decision about the use of that component. This intelligent data is static in nature, meaning that the information does not change over time. Examples of static parameters are the component value, voltage rating, tolerance, temp range, etc. The second purpose of the intelligent data is to assist in the procuring of components, which is usually done outside the engineering department and requires a good bill of materials to be done correctly. Purchasing departments deal with dynamic parameters such as lead times, quantities, cost, life cycle, etc. Therefore, when a library is built, it should be done to accommodate both the designer and the purchaser. Keep in mind that the engineering library, 
in whatever structural form it has taken, is likely different from the purchasing database, which might be some sort of PLM, product lifecycle management, system. Coordinating parameters of these two systems, like unique part numbers that are shared by both systems, can save a great deal of time, and reduce the potential for mistakes when procuring parts for a design. A very good human readable description field can also serve as a verification to purchasers that the correct parts are being ordered. 7.6. A process flow for failure. Often, a designer is pressed for time and needs a part that is not found in the library to complete a section of a schematic. In this case, a part might be created on the fly, that has the minimum information needed to keep the design rolling. The intention is that the rest of the information and models will be added to the part when there is more time to do so. The footprint might also be created in haste due to time constraints, again with the intention of cleaning everything up at some later time. When the designer is asked for a fabrication drawing or bill of materials, time may have run out to clean things up, which results in manually creating these documents. The manual creation of a bomb has a very high potential for incomplete and erroneous data, and non-verified footprints can lead to rework, respins of the PCB, and huge delays in the schedule. As the saying goes, quoted from Jack Bergen, There's never enough time to do it right, but there's always enough time to do it over. 7.7. .7. A process flow for success. Doing it right the first time will always save time in the long run. When a component is needed for a design, building it with complete information from the start has many benefits. Typically, a part needs to be fully researched before it can be added to the design. Fully building a library part when the information is fresh in one's mind is the best time to do it. Having to later recall data, or go back and regather it while updating the part, will take unnecessary time out of the schedule. Furthermore, having fully defined parts allows for quick generation of iterative bills of materials that can be communicated to procurement departments during the design process. This ensures that a part is not being used in a design that shouldn't be used for reasons such as life cycle, cost, lead times, or regulatory issues that the designer might not be aware of. With a fully defined and well-maintained library, as soon as the schematic is complete, the entire bomb can be sent out immediately for purchasing, and the netlist, along with approved footprints, can be pushed over to the PCB where layout can be accomplished. 7.8. Chapter Summary Component libraries are vital to any design because they store the symbolic, physical, and parametric data for a component. Libraries typically are either symbol-centric, meaning each component has all the data to describe the part linked to its symbol, or they are database libraries, meaning all data and links are stored in a database format. It is extremely important that libraries be built and maintained with consistency, so that reports can be generated with accurate information, without having to take the time to clean up errors and inconsistencies.